I discovered that my boyfriend is cheating after buying him an expensive Christmas gift. Hey there, 25F here, and I just uncovered that my ex, a 26M, had been cheating on me for a whopping five months. I was beyond devastated, filled with a mix of rage, especially considering I had recently splurged on getting him a new PlayStation 5, something he really wanted but couldn't afford. I had been diligently saving up for a while to get in the console along with a bunch of games. We had been in a relationship for a solid three years, with the last year and a half spent cohabitating. The moment I discovered his infidelity was when his side girl messaged me, offering an apology, claiming she had no clue about his relationship status. Initially skeptical, she backed up her story with some damning evidence, a slew of messages where he shamelessly flirted and sent explicit pictures. It was utterly disgusting. Without hesitation, I kicked him out immediately after this revelation. When I confronted him, expecting at least some denial, he didn't even try and went on to insult me, calling me boring and claiming he deserved better. Fueled by rage, I did something completely out of character, I slapped him. The shock on both our faces was palpable, I had never resorted to violence before, always opting for calm resolution. But he had pushed me too far. In the heat of the moment, I unleashed my pent-up frustrations, screaming at him about how he contributed nothing to our shared space, never paid rent due to his laziness and lack of a decent job. At one point, I even threatened to return the PS5 I had bought for him. That got his attention, he looked like a deer caught in headlights. Suddenly, this sorry excuse for a human being changed his tune. He began apologizing, shedding tears, swearing he never intended to cheat and promising to make amends. It was a nauseating display of hypocrisy, he only seemed to care when it involved something he desired. What a disgusting pig. Swiftly, I showed him the door and he's bombarding me with texts, drowning in apologies, he even sent an unflattering photo of himself shedding tears. I made it clear that chasing after the PS5 was futile, we were done, and I promptly blocked him. As for the PS5, I've decided not to keep it. I already own one, but it struck me that my parents had intentions of getting it for my younger brother. The original plan was for them to purchase the console, while I'd chip in with games and an extra PS Store gift card. Well, plans change, and I'll be giving my folks a call to let them know about the shift in our arrangements for my brother's gift. Update, hey everyone! I'm back with an update, and first off, a massive thank you to everyone who shared their thoughts and experiences with me, your support means the world to hearts. Today turned out to be pretty amazing. I celebrated Christmas with my family, my parents and my little brother. Let me tell you, my parents are culinary wizards, and after a few days of no appetite, I feasted on some incredible food. It was truly wonderful. Regarding the gift arrangement with my parents, we came to an agreement. I'll be gifting the PS5 and games to my brother, while my parents went all out, getting him an Oculus and other accessories for the console. When it was time for the presents, I was in for a surprise. My brother had gotten me an extravagant gift, makeup from Sephora and a gift card. My parents then revealed that he had been saving up for my gift since the beginning of the year. I couldn't hold back the tears, I was bawling my eyes out and gave him the biggest hug, my sweet baby brother. I expressed my gratitude for the gift and told him how much I loved it. When he opened my parents' present, he looked confused, mentioning he didn't have a PS5 for the Oculus. That's when I told him to open my gift, and the moment he did, he burst into tears and immediately hugged me. I don't know what came over me, but I started crying along with him. I genuinely, really love my brother. He's a sweet and well-behaved 12-year-old, and that's why every gift he received was well-deserved. Yes, they were expensive, but seeing him happy made every penny worth it. So, after the gift exchange, I helped my brother set up the PS5 in his room, and we spent some quality time playing games together. Out of the blue, he tells me he loves me and thinks I'm the best big sister in the world. Cue my emotions taking over for the third time, probably thanks to my period not helping matters. There you have it, I had the most fantastic Christmas with my family, and witnessing my brother so elated made the heartbreak I went through worth it. Now, as for my trash ex, he's still creating new Instagram accounts to apologize. I bluntly told him to go away, fully aware that his apologies were fueled by a desire for the PS5, not genuine remorse. I made it clear that I handed it over to someone far more deserving than him, and he responded with curses. I warned him that if he didn't back off, 
I'd report him to the police for harassment. That shut him up, and I haven't heard from him since. I'm amazed by and also kinda afraid of my girlfriend. I'm a 28-year-old guy, and I've been in a relationship with Jen, a fantastic 27-year-old woman, for two years now. Let me tell you, she's the whole package, kind, smart, funny, and absolutely stunning. Her warm and bubbly personality lights up any room, and I've coined the term resting nice face, RNF, for her because she's always radiating positivity. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches, she may seem all sunshine and rainbows, but there's a side of her, a 5 feet 5 inches caged fury, as I like to call it. Given her looks and approachable nature, guys often hit on her, and unfortunately, she also faces unwarranted hate from some women. In the past, I used to get quite jealous when guys approached her, leading to arguments. However, she made it clear that my jealousy wasn't warranted. Let me set the record straight, she's not intentionally flirty, she doesn't initiate conversations with guys, and she's definitely not seeking male attention. Now, I stand at 6 feet 1 inch with a somewhat intimidating belt, and my default response used to be a tall stance, crossed arms, and a stern is there an issue directed at the guy. But I've since changed my approach. Rather than immediately jumping in when guys hit on her, potentially causing arguments, I've started paying attention to how she handles unwanted attention. Turns out, she's like a ninja when it comes to deflecting creeps and dealing with mean girls. She reads the situation like a pro, knowing when to be nice, when to ignore, when to be firm, and when to walk away. It made me realize that I don't need to be jealous, she can take care of herself just fine. Over the summer, I had a nasty knee injury, and Jen stepped up in a big way. She practically moved in to help me during my surgery and rehab. She's been nothing short of amazing, driving me around when I couldn't, preparing meals when I couldn't stand, and even assisting with my physical therapy. I'm still rocking a knee brace, but I'm on the road to recovery, thanks to her unwavering support. Jen has this incredible love for dancing, and even though I'm not exactly a dance floor virtuoso, I happily accompany her because it brings her so much joy, not to mention she looks absolutely amazing when she's dancing. However, since my injury, our outings and dance sessions have been on hold. Given my limited dancing abilities, especially post-injury, I arranged for her friends to join us on a night out, ensuring she'd have someone to dance with, and I'm pretty sure she enjoys dancing with her female friends more anyway. Our group included me, Jen, a couple, and two other girls. The couple left early on. As I watched Jen dance that night, a moment of clarity hit me like a ton of bricks. I found myself overwhelmed with gratitude, realizing how lucky I was to be going home with the person I love most in the world. It was then that I knew I wanted to marry her. Now, when you have three attractive women tearing up the dance floor, you're bound to attract attention. I'm not one to hate, but it was rather amusing witnessing guys attempting to hit on them. I was just glad that it wasn't my problem anymore. This particular group of guys, however, seemed immune to hints. They surrounded the girls and tried to dance closely behind them. Jen, always quick on her feet, said something and pushed them aside. The girls made their way back to where I was sitting, and the guys were left glaring at us. As the club closed, we headed towards my car, thinking the night was over. Little did we know, those persistent guys weren't ready to let it go. They started hurling insults our way, particularly targeting me with the classic beta and not a real man jabs, real and sell energy. The irony that these were the guys I should have been protecting my GF from seemed entirely lost on them. Their aggression escalated, and despite our attempts to defuse the situation, a fight seemed imminent. We were just a block away from the club, so I decided to guide the girls back toward the area where people waited for Ubers. However, the guys blocked our path, and I was contemplating getting in their faces, hoping to intimidate my way out of it while the girls escaped. I had a bad leg, and a shove would likely knock me down, not an ideal situation when you're outnumbered. Suddenly, Jen unleashed a relentless barrage of insults and obscenities toward these guys, without missing a beat. It was a genuine eruption of rage, and I wasn't even sure if she took a breath during the onslaught. The guys were utterly shocked, as was I, by the sheer anger she directed at them. I had never seen her so furious. While they were backing up, she kept advancing, screaming at them. She managed to drive them back towards the crowd, creating a commotion in the process, as I said, she's a ninja. Clubgoers started converging, and it became clear they weren't on the guy's side. The embarrassment on their faces was palpable as they were scolded by 120 pounds of pure, white-hot rage. Now, this is the part where, by all accounts, I should be embarrassed that my girlfriend, who stands 8 inches shorter and weighs 75 pounds less than me, ended up preventing us from getting into a physical altercation. But, truth be told, it was one of the most baddest things I've ever witnessed. Update, a massive thank you to everyone who took the time to read and comment on my previous post. I was a bundle of nerves while writing it, 
working up the courage to broach the topic of our future and ensure we were on the same page. I knew she loved me and wanted to be my wife, but with her ambitious goals, like pursuing grad school, I understood if she wanted to delay getting engaged, it would still have stunned, though. One day, she was lounging on the couch, engrossed in a book, and I found myself just gazing at her. Thoughts like, she's incredible, just talk to her, everything will be fine ran through my mind. She looked at me over her big, dumb glasses and flashed a smile, that was the nudge I needed. Thankfully, we were both ready and in the same headspace to take the next step. We recently went on a long weekend trip, and during a walk to a picturesque spot for a picnic, I staged a little stumble, pretending to re-injure my knee. She probably saw through the act, but she played along. She loved the ring, and, of course, she said yes. My previous post was essentially a love and appreciation letter about her. Alongside that, I crafted a more personal letter addressed to her, handwritten to give to her during the proposal. Tears welled up when I proposed, and once again, when she read the letter. Later that day, I decided to show her the post, and to my relief, she liked it. I managed to draw a couple of small laughs and a loving look from her. She brushed off my account, claiming I was exaggerating, those guys were just full of hot air, she's not a badass, men don't flirt with her that often, women rarely give her a hard time, and she'd supposedly kick my ass if I argued otherwise, although she threw in a joke there, or at least I hope it was. Regardless, I'm standing by what I wrote. In my eyes, she's a tough badass. I found genuine joy in writing both the post and the letter, so I started handwriting her little letters and poems. Admittedly, they're not masterpieces, but she keeps each one. She even went as far as printing out the post and saving it. She tells me she loves my writing because it makes her feel more connected when I express my feelings. I interpret that as her way of saying, it's the thought that counts. I'm both amazed by and slightly intimidated by my fiancé.